Hello everyone and welcome to the 2021 Margie H. Jenkins Lecture Series in Spring Open House at the LSU Ag Center Hammond Research Station. We know 2020 has been a tough year and as you can see from the format we're going virtual again. But the gardens are doing fantastic and we're really excited to show you all of our fantastic plants uh, that we have for this year. My name is Dr. Jeb Fields and I'm the Assistant Research Coordinator here at the Hammond Research Station and joining me in this virtual tour is Jason Stagg, Maureen Thiessen, and Ashley Edwards. We'll talk to them some more as we get going. So we invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy this virtual garden tour. Let's get in the garden and go check out some plants. One of my favorite southern indicas in the garden is this Duchess of Cyprus. It has this gorgeous apple blossom-like bloom. And one of the reasons I really like it is it means a lot to me because it was from my hometown. This was discovered in a uh, nursery um, in central Florida in Lakeland, and it's named after Cypress Gardens, which is in my hometown of Winter Haven, Florida. So a lot of personal connections with the Duchess of Cyprus. Another hard to find Southern Indica Azalea is this here North Lake Beauty. And as you can see, it's a very prolific bloomer. It was bred and released by Buddy Lee. Um, and it also tends to bloom in this two-tone um, light and dark pink colors to give it a two-tone appearance in the landscape. Up close, you can even see some striation and interesting patterns among the individual flowers. We've shown you several southern indica azaleas so far, but I wanted to highlight this one called Gulf Pride. I really like this one because of the bloom color. It really stands out in the landscape. It's a really nice light lavender color. Also, the flowers are fragrant and attractive to pollinators, so it's one of my personal favorites. As you walk through the Margie Jenkins Azalea Garden here at the Hammond Research Station, I think one of the most striking big indica azaleas that you're going to see is this Republic of West Florida. And this was an introduction by Mr. Buddy Lee, who lives just up the road in Independence. And for many of you, you already know that Buddy Lee was the inventor of the Encore Azalea. But he also did some work and some introductions with indica azaleas. And I think this one with this incredible light pink bloom is just so beautiful. Um, and look at it. Look at the number of blooms on this plant. You got to get you some of these. They're really fantastic. We have a lot of indica azaleas here in the Hammond Research Station Azalea Garden, and these are the large evergreen azaleas that are so common throughout Louisiana, and we've caught the bloom perfectly. This is Daphne Salmon Azalea. This is a more unusual variety. You can still find it on the market, but it has a true salmon pink color that really stands out in the garden. This was one of Miss Margie Jenkins' favorite azaleas, and I believe our original plants came from her nursery. This is a rhododendron indicum called Pride of Mobile. It's an early season to mid-season bloomer. Flowers are sort of a watermelon pink color. They prefer well-drained acidic soil. Uh, this one will reach a height of about six to 10 feet. Native azalea is a native deciduous perennial shrub that grows about four to five feet tall. It has extremely showy and fragrant flowers that open with or before its leaves. This is another rhododendron indicum called Fisher Pink. It's an open multi-stem deciduous shrub with an upright spreading habit. It really packs on tons of flower power. Its pink blooms are long-lasting and showy. Another one of the large indica azaleas is Red Formosa. Now this one sometimes can be a little bit harder to find in the market, but it was a sport of the more common purple Formosa azalea that is kind of ubiquitous around landscapes. But red Formosa really does have a more striking red tone to it, looks more jewel tone, and it's just a little bit later than some of the other azaleas right now in the azalea garden. Now for a bit of brighter color with the indica azaleas, you can choose Judge Solomon with this really nice bright pink bloom. Blooms the same time as the other ones, evergreen and a large indica azalea just like many of the others. One of my favorite Southern Indica azaleas is this Ken Sanderson variety here. It's an older variety, not easily found in the marketplace. In particular, I love how the flowers open very wide and flat to display the beautiful faces of these flowers. They're pale lavender with bright magenta splotches for wonderful contrast. The habit of this particular specimen is a little more loose because it has been planted in partial shade, but as you can see, it still blooms prolifically. So just up the road in Franklinton is West Farms Nursery, owned by Mr. Dale Westmoreland, his wife Lynette, and their son Matt. 
incredible local nursery where Mr. Dale is actually doing a lot of his own azalea breeding. And you can see one of the results here. We have Junie Bell, and this is part of the West Farms Bell series of azaleas. Guys, this is an incredible azalea. It's completely covered in blooms. It's almost like a very, very dwarf version of the big Formosan lavender or purple. And this is a rebloomer. It's going to bloom a little bit through the summer and again in the fall. What a great plant. Another small azalea in the West Farms Nursery Bell series is Leela Bell. This is a much smaller growing azalea, which would be great for borders and small spaces. A really nice bright pink color. Incidentally, the name Bell that you see on a lot of these series of azaleas was Mr. Dale Westmoreland's mom's name. So a really nice tribute to her. Wanted to show you this other new azalea called Pink Bell. Again, this is the West Farms Bell series azaleas. What I love about this one is this really dark pink or dark red blotch that's here at the top of the azalea. This should be a smaller, more compact grower, but again, just a powerhouse of color. Japanese maples are a very popular ornamental tree and are one of the few trees that provide good fall color here in the deep south. Japanese maples come in many different colors, forms, shapes, and sizes, but they all add exquisite character to the landscape. This here is just a regular green leaf variety with coarse palmately lobed leaves, and as you can see, it is starting to leaf out. We can also start to see the small reddish flowers that appear in clusters in the early spring. These will ripen into the wing-shaped samaras that characterize the Acer genus. Take a look at the unique star-shaped blooms on this plant. This is Elysium hybrid, also called star anise, and this one is Scorpio. It's evergreen. It maintains a pretty compact growth habit in the landscape. It'll bloom in the spring and again in late summer. One of our Louisiana super plants that's a great woody shrub is Mrs. Schiller's Delight Viburnum. This is a Walter's Viburnum, meaning that it has smaller leaves and generally a smaller plant, although you can see it's still getting about three or four feet tall and wide. But a very dense plant, and this time of year here in late March, it's in full bloom. Look at these great clusters of white blooms. So springtime here at the station means buckeye bloom time. So this is actually a more unusual buckeye. This is Mexican buckeye, well adapted to hot temperatures, has this beautiful pink bloom this time of year, and as you can see, the leaves are just starting to emerge. Makes a nice woody shrub or a very small tree, um, very open uh, architecture to the plant, and a nice specimen in the garden. One of our favorite small native trees is pawpaw. Semina triloba. It's uh, just beginning to bloom and look at these very unusual blooms. Uh, you can get fruit on these. It's basically a temperate papaya. And the great thing about this plant is that it is a larval host for the zebra swallowtail butterfly. This compact evergreen azalea is named Bollywood and it's a compact variety that only grows to about two to three feet in height so it's great for small spaces. Here we are in late March and the plants are just loaded with buds about to break open. The flowers are quite prolific and are a bright neon magenta in color. Probably the most striking quality of Bollywood is its variegated foliage. It's not something that we commonly see amongst azaleas. A smaller azalea, which will be probably a small to mid-sized grower, maybe three, four, or five feet at maturity, is pink camellia. Now this plant's only a couple of years old, but you can barely see the foliage for all the blooms. I mean, it is just a cute little puffball of pink. This is one of the Carla series of azaleas, which was a breeding program managed out of both North Carolina State University and LSU. So one of the staples here in the Margie Jenkins Azalea Garden is our wonderful collection of Encore Azaleas. The Encore series of azaleas are small to medium-sized azaleas. They give you a great bloom in the spring. They'll bloom again off and on through the summer with a light bloom, and then you get another great bloom in the fall. So they're a reblooming azalea. The Encores were bred by Mr. Buddy Lee, who lives in Independence, Louisiana. And Buddy has bred so many different colors just a great palette of colors. And you can see here, this is a really nice dark pink called Autumn Cheer. We wanted to feature this Encore Azalea as well. 
This one is called Autumn Fire and it is in full bloom right now. It really does have a beautiful firelight color to it. A dark deep red, semi-double blooms, plants that keep their shape. These are going to be smaller plants, probably three feet or so, three or four feet, and we've done no pruning on these and they're still holding their shape. Now speaking of pruning with Encore azaleas and some of the other reblooming azaleas, it's always confusing to know when to prune those. So the time to do that is right after their heavy spring bloom. That way you may sacrifice some of the smaller bloom amounts in the summer, but you'll still get a good fall bloom. Here is yet another compact evergreen reblooming showstopper, the Flora Moore Red Azalea, which typically tops out at three feet. The blooms peak in the spring and continue through summer and into fall. Other colors in the Flora Moore series include pink, hot pink, and lavender, but I just love the striking red of this variety. Now, there are several reblooming types of azaleas out there on the market, and this particular variety is actually called rebloom azaleas. They come in several different colors, and it was developed by azalea enthusiast and breeder Bob Head. Um, what's neat about these is, again, they feature large flowers that appear in the spring and then they re-bloom in the summer and really keep blooming until the first frost. They are compact, so they'll stay small and they're great for small spaces and for borders. One of the most striking mid-sized growing azaleas we have here in the garden is called dogwood azalea, or sometimes you'll see it sold as variegated dogwood. Look how intense the two colors show up on the blooms. It's really quite a showstopper and one that should be used more in our landscapes here in Louisiana. This is Deja Bloom Pink Ribbons. It has a fast growing habit and gorgeous pink blooms. This one was bred for its vibrant blooms that give off a light floral fragrance. It's ideal for use as a flowering hedge or border. Deja Bloom Azaleas are an evergreen reblooming line of azaleas that were introduced by Jay Berry Nursery. They were bred for bright, bold colors and disease and pest resistance. This here is red tiara, and as you can see, it's covered in bright red blooms. This azalea will also put on a bloom show in the summer and again in the fall, though its best show is right now in the early spring. Its compact form makes it great for small spaces and hedges. Here is Lilicina, or Lilicina. This is a fairly new plant for us. We only have one, but what we love about it are the smaller blooms and this beautiful light lavender color. It's quite unusual in the garden. One of the more unusual azalea collections we have here in the Piney Woods are the Huang azaleas that were hybridized in China. What we love about them is that they're like a medium size, very densely growing evergreen azalea, but look at the huge number of blooms. You can barely see the leaves for the number of blooms. This particular one is mostly white, throws a few pink blooms every once in a while, but they all came over to the United States as numbered selections. One of the more unique types of plants we have here at the Hammond Research Station are these Southgate rhododendrons. Now typically you wouldn't think of a rhododendron as a plant for southern Louisiana, and typically you'd be right. But these Southgate series actually do pretty good for us if you grow them in shade. These were hybridized locally by Dr. John Thornton, and we really love them. This one in particular is one of our earliest opening Southgate rhododendrons, and this is Grace, which is a white flower with little pink undertones. Uh, the others in the series will go from really bright white to really dark purple and all in between. Well, it's late March here at the Hammond Research Station and that means Laura Petalums are in full swing and with their beautiful bloom. So this is a great selection from the Southern Living Plant Collection called Purple Daydream. It's a true dwarf Laura Petalum, only growing about two to three feet tall and getting a little bit wider at three to four feet as you can see right here. So the purple foliage does persist through ev even our summers, and you get these great dark pink tassely flowers on it right now. So some of our lower petalum can go pretty tall. This is Jazz Hands Pink, and this is Jazz Hands White behind me. Both are about 12 foot tall. These are great lower petalum if you need a larger space occupied. Look at the blooms on these. They're just absolutely fantastic. And obviously you can tell the difference in blooms are the pink flowers and the white flowers. Really dense bloom, really profuse flowers, very vigorous plant. If you've got a big space, perfect options. 
we always think of azalea blooms for springtime, but Laura Pedalum is a great spring flowering shrub for our landscapes. This is Cerise Charm. What we really like about Cerise Charm is it stays this nice, compact, round form. But notice the pink flowers, they're really pretty, and these are just coming out. So this is a little bit later than a lot of our other Laura Pedalums in the garden. Here we have a dwarf Laura Pedalum called Emerald Snow. I personally love the combination of the dark emerald green foliage contrasting with the creamy white flowers. This variety has its peak bloom in spring, producing masses of these stringy flowers and clusters with some flowering activity through the summer. Very little pruning and maintenance is needed for this variety, which is great either as a standalone specimen or planted as a border or hedge. Here we have Crimson Fire Laura Petalum, also called a fringe flower. At maturity, it reaches a height of about four to five feet and equally um, as wide. We like this one because the neon pink flowers in spring really stand out compared to the foliage. This is a mid-size growing Laura Petalum. This is called Red Diamond and it's part of the Diamond series from the Southern Living Plant Collection. And you can see how tall it is. It'll get at least six or seven feet tall and the same width. I'm about 5'9", so you can see it's already getting up there. Uh, again though, beautiful dark purple foliage, and this is considered an evergreen. It keeps this color pretty much year round. And look at this bright red bloom, these tassel-like blooms, and this is probably one of the reddest blooming Laura Petalums here on the market. When Laura Petalums were first introduced into the industry, this is the size that you actually saw a lot, because naturally they're a small tree or a really large shrub. And when you let them grow like they want to, these older varieties, they can really make a striking small tree in the landscape. This is a beautiful, incredibly dense blooming white selection from Mr. Buddy Lee. We also have some really nice native specimens here in the Azalea Garden. This is Devilwood, or Osmanthus americanus. This will make a small to medium-sized tree, an open form. It can also be grown as a large shrub. And this time of year here in late March, it's going to be covered in these beautiful small white blooms. So even though it's late March, we still have camellias blooming in our garden here. Now, we do have a few late blooming camellia japonicas, but this is a different species. This is Camellia edite, and it has a perfect tightly wrapped bloom. You can see how symmetrical it is. It's a nice pink color. The bush has a great shape as well, and the leaves are very tough, very thick, very dark green. It's a really interesting plant to have blooming later in the season. We have a great collection of Japanese maples here in the Piney Woods Garden. This particular one is Sango Kaku, and this is oftentimes referred to as coral bark Japanese maple because the bark turns really bright red right before the leaves come out and then you have this beautiful profusion of chartreuse leaves that start to emerge. This can get pretty large. Uh, we, this one is currently about 12 feet tall and it has a nice vase shape. Here we have a shrub called Michelia, which is an evergreen shrub that has been reclassified as a magnolia. This particular variety is called fairy blush. Its smaller leaves are glossy just like a magnolia and the cream white flowers are prolific forming at each leaf axle instead of just at the tips like we typically see with magnolias. Fairy blush was bred by Mark Jury of New Zealand to produce even larger masses of flowers which are very fragrant. The flower buds emerge in the spring from a very bronze russet colored bud the lovely white flowers also kind of have this blush of pinkish purple on their edges, which make for great contrast. Um, and they usually stay very cupped instead of opening all the way. Here's a dwarf variety of Japanese maple known as Murasaki Kiyohime. This Japanese maple will not grow taller than a few feet, but it can reach four to five feet in width. It's a favorite amongst bonsai enthusiasts. In the spring, as you can see, its leaves emerge greenish with this reddish border around the edges, which will turn green later in the summer. And then in the fall, it turns a lovely bronzy orange color. Here's a really interesting red bud that has a great bloom density, as you can see here along the stems of this plant. This is actually a Chinese red bud. This was bred by the National Arboretum, and uh, the cultivar name is Don Egolf. And we've had this growing for a number of years here. It's very upright, multi-branched, 
has a nice vase shape to it. Not a real fast grower, but a reliable bloomer for us every year here in March. And currently with the bloom, you're already starting to see some of the beautiful green leaves emerge. So one of the more unusual choices for a landscape plant here in Louisiana that you don't see used very often is pussy willow. And this can actually be a pretty large shrub. The one that we're looking at right now is about 10 feet wide, 10 or 12 feet tall, and we haven't really pruned it. We're just letting it do its natural form, but it's really nice. It's deciduous. And then in the spring, you get this two-phase flower that comes out. First, you get this nice, soft, furry, catkin-like structure that opens up to these whitish, yellowish, actual flower structures. And from a distance, it gets a really nice silvery look to it early on, and then as the flowers open up and the leaves start to emerge, you get a second phase of aesthetics of the shrub. So when you think of a spring flowering shrub, quince isn't usually the first thing that comes to mind, but we actually have some really nice ones here at the Hammond Research Station. This is double take scarlet quince, and it's got these really nice deep scarlet red flowers. It's also got a little bit larger flower compared to most other quince, and it's a really profuse and dense flowering on all the wood. So really neat plant, not always talked about. Great plant for Hammond Research Station. Anyone that knows me knows that I love abelias. They're a great four season plant here in Southern Louisiana. This particular abelia is radiance, and it's got these really neat variegated leaves, and if you get in closer, you can actually see the newer leaves come out with a lime green variegation and then turn to a paler green variegation with older leaves. Very similar to Radiance, this is Hopley. It's gonna grow a little taller than the Radiance. And we can see this in full sun. It's got that really bright chartreuse color. And again, as you get up closer, you can see the variegations. They get a little more pale variegations with age. Really dense foliage plant, great for Louisiana landscapes. Here's another great, elegant Japanese maple known as Katsura. Katsura's leaves emerge bright green with a, a lovely orange border around the edges. And then as the weather warms up, they'll turn more of a darker green. And in the fall, the tree will give us a lovely bronzy orange fall color show. Katsura is somewhat compact. It'll reach generally 10 to 15 feet in height. Um, it's also a little bit more tolerant to leaf scorch, which is great for our Louisiana heat. So we'd like to ask you a question. <laughs> Do you like native trees? Uh, I'm sorry for the terrible pun, but this is Asculus pava, a native red buckeye uh, to the southern southeastern United States. Just a fantastic native tree here, great for wildlife. It's not quite in full bloom yet. You can see these red bracts will eventually bloom up here pretty soon, but we wanted to show it to you because it's just a fantastic tree year round. Now it's called a buckeye because it'll eventually form these little seeds that are brown and they have a little white spot on them that's said to look like a deer's eye, so it's a buckeye tree. Does it get too big for the southern Louisiana landscapes? So in the last few years, we've been hearing a lot about distillium as a really great evergreen shrub, something new that's on the market. Uh, some of the original distilliums that have, were introduced were quite large, but breeding has been going crazy on these things. And we're really starting to see a nice compact form come across a lot of companies. This is one of our favorites, mainly because, not only because of the, the small form, but look at this great color on the new growth. This is called Cinnamon Girl, and this is from Bailey's First Edition Plants. It's nice, lower growing, very dense, small leaves, great choice for distillium. A really popular landscape plant here in Louisiana along the Gulf South are the bottle brush plants. Now, bottle brushes are actually well adapted to our rainfall and our heat and humidity. What they're not so well adapted to is our sometimes extreme cold temperatures for South Louisiana. So we've just had a back-to-back -back winter storm, as you all know, but this particular bottle brush survived just fine. Just a little bit of tip burn, didn't hurt the blooms, the blooms are coming on. This is called Woodlander's Hardy. As you can see, it can be used for a really large shrub uh, for used for screening or a nice hedge. So we really love deciduous magnolias here at the Hammond Research Station. And these complex hybrid yellow magnolias are some of our absolute favorites. We really like it. This is Annie Lou, one of our plantings, and it's actually one of the later bloomers. Some have already bloomed, some are just now coming on, and Annie Lou is just now coming on, but you can see really gorgeous yellow flowers. So this particular bed that we're in right now is full of a bunch of different yellow magnolia cultivars, and that really inspired us to 
start up our new garden, which is the Magnolia Evaluation Garden. This was funded in part by the Louisiana Society of Horticulture Research and it's under construction right now where we're going to be testing and evaluating long-term viability of multiple and various deciduous magnolias, southern magnolias, and all types of magnolias looking at new cultivars, new hybrids, and some of the existing and underutilized cultivars and hybrids. So by next year we'll have an entire new garden to show you of all these magnolias and we can't wait. We are building a great collection of yellow flowering magnolias here at the Hammond Research Station. This is in the Piney Woods, and this particular magnolia is Judy Zook. A lot of these yellow magnolias are very complex hybrids with three, four parents um, listed on their hybrid uh, information. So they're reliable bloomers for us, and they're still kind of hard to find in the trade here in Louisiana. So this is Karomi Shikabu Lavender. And this is actually a fitting plant for the Margie Jenkins lecture series to talk about because this is one of Mar Miss Margie's favorite azaleas. This is actually Rhododendron linearfolium, which is a different species than what we normally think of. And linearfolium is these long linear flowers. Now another one that's very similar, it's actually a sport found by one of our friends at SFA Gardens, Dr. Dave Creech, is speckled spider. So let's go look at that. So this is speckled spider, a sport of the Karomi Shikabu. Notice the lighter color flowers, and you can really see those pronounced spotting that you see, which gives it its name, speckled spider. Another great azalea at the Hammond Research Station.